On this episode of the Massive Agent Podcast, episode number 10, we're getting into the topic that so many of you guys have asked about. Today, we're hitting Instagram. The Massive Agent Podcast. We lead generation tips and strategies to get you more leads and sell more homes. I love to buy houses. I like to sell houses. It takes brass balls to sell real estate. Wait a minute. The leads are weak. You're weak. I've had better. better. Oh, have I got your attention now? Here's your host, Dustin Brome. Hey, what is up, Massive Agents? Welcome to episode number 10. We're talking about Instagram today. That means Instagram stories, the posts, how often should you post, what should it be about, should, should you use hashtags, where should, you, where should you put the hashtags, all that good stuff. We're going to hit it. I am your host, Dustin Brome. I'm a realtor here in Salt Lake City, Utah. I founded a company called Search Salt Lake and saltlakeinsider.com as well. And I'm also one of the co-founders of the Snap Pack Live real estate Facebook group. We're about 3,000 strong. If you want this podcast 24-7, you need to go join the Snap Pack group because it's all real estate marketing tips, strategies, ideas all the time in a collaborative way. Go join the Snap Pack group if you haven't yet. Now, what is the Massive Agent Podcast? Real quick, this is a podcast for real estate marketing. Ideas to help you to generate more leads and to sell more homes. Simple as that. So even though most of that, most of the ways to get leads has to do with digital and being online and social media, there's a lot of stuff that's just old school. There's a lot of business basics that we're going to hit on this too. That they're not so they're not as sexy as like, oh, the new Snapchat update and Instagram stories and whatnot. It doesn't mean they don't work. If you, so if your goal is to sell more homes, you're in the right place. We're gonna we're gonna take care of you. Now, as I'm recording this, it's not quite March 1st of 2018. Why is that important? Well, the massive contest ends at 11.59 p.m. on February 28th. So all of you guys who have written us a review on iTunes, who have shared a link to our podcast in Facebook groups or on your business page, first off, thank you. Super helpful. It means, it means the world to me. Thank you so much for doing that. But for everyone who did that and screenshotted it, put it and posted that on our page, you're entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. So when you're listening to this right now, it's March 1st. I don't yet know who the contest winner is. I will go live on the Massive Agent Podcast Facebook page on March 1st, Thursday, March 1st, which is when this episode is released. And I will do the drawing. We'll find out who the winner of the $100 gift card is. So on next week's episode, I'll give a shout out to the winner. But right now, the contest is still going. And I just want to throw this in there because I'm ADD and this this is my squirrel. This is my squirrel moment. If you, it's, it's funny. I'm I was looking at some of the the stats and the analytics for my podcast, and in episode number three, it doesn't sound that interesting. If you just look at the title, it says how a drone can get you more listings. I think what happens is a lot of people see that and they're like, uh, they're just thinking drone photography and drone video will help you get more listings, right, guys? If you haven't listened to episode number three yet, go do it because that's not what I'm getting at. Okay. There's, there's a very unique way that I use my drone to help me get more listings, to win more listing appointments or to win more listings from listing appointments. It's not what you think. So if you have not yet listened to episode three about drones, go back and do that. It's pretty cool. And it's not what you think. Stay tuned at the end of the episode today. We're going to get to the massive Q&A. And I even have a soundbite for you today. How cool is that? I told you I would. But today's massive Q&A question is, how can you differentiate yourself from every other person that's doing vlogs and podcasts online? I know it's it seems like so many of us fellow realtors are doing our own shows, are doing podcasts, are doing vlogs, Instagram stories and all that. And, and so, you know, how can you differentiate yourself from them? I think... My answer might surprise some of you guys. But first, we're talking Instagram today. So I think you all know this by now. Instagram is absolutely on fire. It's a monster social network. Even though Facebook is still the 800-pound gorilla, I think Instagram is right on its heels. Instagram, it's... it, And if you're on Instagram and, and you follow uh, certain people in certain industries, especially like the fitness world, um, the, the business world, Instagram's creating like its own culture internally, like people are building businesses and building brands 100% built on the back of Instagram. It's crazy. I see it in the fitness world, in the business world. I'm sure there's you know, food, the foodie world. I'm sure there's a bunch of others that I, that are just not on my radar, but 
Instagram in and of itself is a culture. It's extremely powerful what's going on on Instagram and it's unique. There's nothing else like it. So you ignore Instagram at your peril. Okay. And I've got to admit up until a year or so ago, I totally ignored Instagram because I, I was like, look, I'm already doing Facebook. I'm doing Snapchat. I'm doing you know this, that, and the other. I'm blogging and I just don't like Instagram. Like I didn't get it. I was like, eh, I don't know. But, you know, once I started following some people who were big, quote unquote, influencers in, in, on Instagram, and I started seeing how they did things and, you know, then I saw the power. I was like, okay, you can't ignore it. The numbers don't lie either. Um, you know, the, the daily active users is off the charts with Instagram. And what's great too, we're in real estate. Guys, real estate is so visual. There's so much about what we do is visual and emotional right? If you have a listing that has an amazing view of the city or it's right on, on a, a lake or it's, you know what I mean? Like it has some cool new fireplace no one's ever seen before or whatever. Like that's what Instagram wants is stuff, visual stuff that gets people's attention and gets them emotional some, somehow, some way. So we just happen to be in an industry that's great for Instagram. Now, what do you post? Okay. And, and we'll get to Instagram stories here in a second. Right now, I'm just talking about the posts themselves. Now, I want to really implore you, don't just post pictures of freaking houses. There's nothing more boring than if you look at somebody's IG profile and it's just the front of a house, every single post, the front of a house, or they put some text into a little, uh, you know, text graphic that's like, come to my open house or whatever. You have to, you have to think, you have to re-engineer what gets people's attention, what interests people. And the best way to know that is what, what interests you, what gets your attention when you're scrolling through a newsfeed, you know, when you're on Instagram scrolling through what makes you stop scrolling and then start trying to figure out how you can use that type of content in your, in your post. All right. Now, Instagram's unique where you can't put a link to a listing or a website or whatever in the post itself. They only give you one link and that's in the in your profile, right? You'll, you'll see the link in bio that people put in their posts real quick. There's actually a service out there called Linktree, and you can use it for free Linktree. What Linktree does is it takes one, go to my, first off, go to my Instagram. Okay. I have, I have three of them. I have my personal one, which is at D I don't use that nearly as often. Uh, I have been over the last couple of weeks, but my main Instagram profile is at search salt Lake and at salt Lake insider. At Search Salt Lake is one I have the most content on, and you know that's my main focus is my Search Salt Lake one. Go there and look at the link in the bio. Click it. Once you do, it opens up this mobile-friendly uh, little app almost, and it has a bunch of different links. All right, so it's a way to put a link to your Facebook, your Twitter, your website, a listing, an article you did, your YouTube channel, whatever, all right there. And that's still using the one link that Linktree gives you to put in your profile. So if you guys want to really use Instagram to get traffic to other things, use Linktree. There's my tip of the day, Linktree. Now that's super unique to Instagram that they don't let you put links in the posts, right? So you just have to figure out what image or video is going to get somebody's attention. And and so if you have a listing, if you have a new listing and your goal is to promote that listing... Don't just post the front of the house. Don't do that. I, I don't know why we think we, we almost feel like it's a, a rule that you have to start with the front of the house and then work your way t- towards the kitchen and the bathroom. Like, no, there's no rules. Pick the most visually appealing, the most attention getting photo first. So that's probably going to be a kitchen or a bathroom or a backyard or a view. So do that first. And then you can have up to 10 photos in the little carousel deal now. So you can add more photos of the listing, but make sure that the one that people see first grabs their attention. That is what's key. That could be the bathroom. It could be, you know, it could be a kid's room. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that it's an attractive attention getting image first. Now, because there's so much we can cover with Instagram and I don't want this to be, you know, three and a half hours of a of a podcast. I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. I'm not going to talk much more about the content of the post itself. Now, how often should you be posting on Instagram? There's, and you're going to notice a trend here. It, de- it depends. And you're, you're going to hear varying opinions on this. I think once a day is sufficient. I sometimes think two day, two times a day works as well. It just depends on what you're doing. And if I were you, here's what I would do instead of just wondering or taking my word for it, as, hey, Dustin says do it once a day or Dustin says do it twice a day, 
Test it out. Do one week where you post once a day and then do another week where you post twice a day. Then look at your your insights and your analytics of the post or of your profile rather and see which, you know, which way got you more followers, which way got you more eyeballs, which one got you more profile views. And that reminds me too, guys, if you don't have a business profile yet, oh, and I'm even going to back up further than that. If you still have a, a, a freaking private Instagram profile, knock that shit off, make it, make it public. If your goal is to get business, if your goal is to build a brand and build yourself up as a real estate person in a real estate company, if it's private, you know, you can't do that. So make it public, then make it a business profile because it gives you analytics. It gives you a lot of functionality. It gives you more, uh, more space in the profile. Uh, people can click to call. They can click for directions. They can, you know, it just makes it better for you. So you can always change it back to a personal if you want, but it's free. Change your personal Instagram profile to a business one for the analytics. So test out the posting. See if once a day works or twice a day works. And make sure you give it a good week or so of data um, before you decide one way or another. Now, for me, honestly, posting twice a day is better, but I just it's just too much for me. And so I limit it to once a day. All right, hashtags. How many hashtags should you be using and where should you put them? There's a lot of debate on this. And again... You're going to want to test this for yourself, okay? Because I think both both things work. Uh, there's a personal preference thing as far as the placement of the hashtags. But as far as how many, Instagram limits you to 30 per post. Personally, when I use between 25 and 30, I get the best reach and the best performing post. So you have to test it for yourself. Again, give it a week or so. Give it a week of doing you know, 10 hashtags, then 15 then try 25, then try 30, you know, just try it out and look at the analytics, but you have to have the business profile to do that. Now, where do you put the hashtags? A lot of people will just, they'll, they'll type out their post, they'll do a little paragraph, and then they'll just paste the, the hashtags in there and, and hit submit. That just looks spammy, it, right? Like when you see that in there, it just looks spammy. Now, one thing people are doing is, is they'll, they'll write out their post in in Buffer or Hootsuite or or a Notepad or Evernote or something, and then they'll copy and paste it into the Instagram app, and they'll put five dots, one dot on each line to kind of give it a big space. You can do that, and and that looks better if somebody's scrolling; they're only seeing the post itself and not all the hashtags. So that's not bad. I personally think it's better to to do the post, hit submit, then paste the hashtags into the first comment. You see this a lot online and, and being debated here and there is, is first comment better or in post? I like first comment because as soon as you get a second comment, nobody can see the hashtags when they're scrolling through in their newsfeed. It just looks better. It's, it's purely cosmetic and aesthetics. I don't really think based on what I've, the research I've done and what I've read, I don't think it matters if you put it in the post with, you know, spaced out with the five lines or first comment. It just looks better in first comment, in my humble opinion. Test that out for yourself, guys. All right, let's talk about stories, Instagram stories. Man, those, they're popular and they're freaking powerful too. You guys know that I'm a big Snapchat fan. I did one of the last episodes on Snapchat. And even though I still love using Snap, Instagram stories is so powerful, mainly because of the geotagging. So Instagram stories, if you guys haven't used it yet, you need to get on there. It's just a way of doing 15 second snaps, video snaps, if you will. I know I'm calling them snaps. They're not called that little 15 second videos, or you could just do a photo. And whenever you do those and you post it to your story, let's say you put 10 of them together, that becomes your overall Instagram story. And one just plays one after another. Okay. So you could do a photo for number one, three videos in a row, three 15 second videos, then three more photos, you know, and that becomes your story. Your stories are there invisible for 24 hours unless you add them to your memories. I'm sorry, memories is Snapchat. They're called moments, your Instagram moments. And those show up on your profile and those can be seen indefinitely until you take them down. So if you have a story that you want to last a while, make sure you add it to your moments. Otherwise it will expire in 24 hours. Now, what I really, really love about Instagram stories is how you can do a geo tag. If I'm out showing a house in you know, a super desirable part of Salt Lake, like in the holiday area, and you know, I'm showing off this view of the mountains or whatever that you can see from the backyard. If I just post that to my story, the only people that are going to see it are the people who follow me, right? Well, if you 
click the geo tag, the location tag option, and then put in holiday Utah, that will show up in the holiday Utah story. Okay. Every location has its own story. If there's enough people using those, those geo tags. So your city, your town, your neighborhood, whatever, probably has its own story. And every time somebody uses one of those geo tags, it gets added to the city story. So people can find you if they're just watching that story. It's super powerful for getting discovered. You guys that have been using Instagram stories for a while, you probably have seen that. Uh, let's say you have five different different uh, pieces to your story. The first three, you didn't use a location tag on and you have 100 views each. Then the fourth one, you used a geo tag on and you have 215 views, right? And then the one after that, you didn't. So it's back to around 100 views. It's just a way to really get your stuff seen by a lot more people. So use the geo tags on Instagram stories. Don't overuse them. If you use one on every, every one, it's stupid. You know, it's annoying. It's spammy. Don't do that, but just know how it works and figure out what you want people to see and then use them sparingly. Now the same thing works with discoverability of hashtags. So I just barely, like before I started recording this, I did a quick little Instagram story image, you know, where you just take a photo. I added hashtag massive agent podcast on there. And then if somebody clicks that tag on the story, it takes them to all the other posts that have used that tag. Sorry, that hashtag. It's just another way of getting discovered. So you're seeing here, Instagram stories have discoverability for you to get seen by people who are not currently following you. That's a big deal. I mean, the same is true. That's why you use hashtags in the posts themselves, but now to use them in stories, it's just it, when so many people are using stories and more and more people are, are, are using stories every day and watching them, it's a great way to get discovered, guys. I talked a lot about this in the Snapchat episode. I forget, what was that, episode seven or eight, something like that. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. But if you're wondering, okay, Instagram stories sound amazing, but what do I do? Like, I, I'm not comfortable in front of the camera and, you know, I hate the sound of my voice and whatever. Well, here's a little, here's a little inside information. I hate the sound of my voice too. Guys, whenever I do these podcast episodes, I'm the one that ed I edit the show. So I do all the post-production. After I do this, I then spend hours listening to my own voice up close and personal in head with headphones on. And I hate my voice, but I do it anyways. You just have to try to get past that guys, because nobody cares. You're the only one that cares what your voice sounds like. You're the only one that cares what you look like on camera. Video has been around for so long now on social media that it's not that big of a deal. People see somebody on video and they're not judging them. They're just like, Oh cool. That's so-and-so, you know, the only person that's worried about it is you. So just start recording whatever's interesting to you. Document your day. Okay. Don't do too much. You know, you want to think about, is this actually interesting? Okay. But if you have a closing and you're showing up, you know, it's like, Hey, I'm on my way to a showing, blah, blah, blah. Cool. There's, there's one little story. Then as you're walking in, you look back and, and there's a cool sunset or a sunrise or whatever. And, and you film that. Okay. And then you throw a geo tag on it. Like you, you just have to figure out what's interesting. Watch a bunch of other people's Instagram stories too. And that'll help give you some inspiration and some ideas, but don't overthink it. That's the key. If you're wondering what, what should you put out? Just put it out. Just put it out. You, you don't know what somebody's going to like and not like. You can have a pretty good idea, but ultimately just put out the content. Now I know that was a crazy, crazy short crash course on Instagram. We could talk about it for an hour, but I'm not going to. So I hope that helps. If you guys have more questions or want to talk more or, or want some more context to some of the things that I've talked about, hit me up on the Massive Agent Podcast Facebook page. Let's start a conversation over there. But I'm, I'm going to end the Instagram section by saying this. If you guys have been ignoring Instagram, let's say you, you kill it with Facebook. Facebook is huge for your business. That's where you get all your business and that's where you spend all your time. Great. Do not ignore Instagram. It's way too big and way too powerful to ignore. It just is. You have to get on Instagram. Again, guys, if you want to follow me and see what I'm doing, see examples of what I'm doing on Instagram. My main profile is at search salt Lake. Then at D Brome is my personal personal one. That's at D B R O H M. That's my personal one. I mean, I'm using that more and more now that I'm doing the podcast. I just feel like I've been ignoring my personal, uh, profile for long enough. So I'm doing both. And then the Salt Lake Insider one. So I'm running three profiles. I don't recommend that. I don't, but again, I do a lot of stupid shit. All right. Now it's time to get into the questions. It's time for massive Q and a that's right. Today's question comes from Justin Conico. 
He's a realtor up in London. No, not England. London, Ontario, Canada. I guess it's just over the, the U.S. border. It's in the vicinity of Toronto. It looks beautiful. And what's crazy is I've been following him on Instagram for a while, and, and he's he's part of the snap pack. I've never heard him say A. Like, do people in Canada still say A? I wish they did. I just don't hear it. I don't, I don't know. That's besides the point. Justin is an amazing realtor. He runs his own brokerage up there. He's a broker owner. And speaking of Instagram, Justin has an awesome idea for for how to use Instagram. He does a show, a one-minute show every single day called Closers Daily. And he just records himself talking about a topic. Uh, it's about a minute long. He edits some text on top of it using the Videorama app. I think he told me one time he was using video Rama. I don't know if he's using something else else now, but he just puts, Hey, episode 234. And then here's the topic. Boom. He puts it over the top of the video. That's it. And then he puts it up on Instagram every single day. It's awesome. So check him out. His Instagram profile is the closers team, the closers team at the closers team. Go follow him. So Justin's question is how can you differentiate yourself from everyone else who's doing a vlog and a podcast and a show? right? And that's a great question. And here's, here's my overall answer. I think most people are putting way too much pressure on themselves to stand out, to be unique, to be the only one doing X, Y, or Z, right? Now that's a great goal. You don't want to be doing everything exactly the way everyone else does, right? You want to be doing something somewhat unique, but I think that that's overvalued because here, and here's what I mean by that. Okay. If you're talking, if you do a, a show like Justin does, and he's talking about like, let's say one episode, he's, he educates people on what earnest money is and why it's important. He could be saying the exact same thing as four other realtors in his market. But first off, chances are whoever's watching is not following all four of them. And even if they were, there's certain people that, that I hear what they're saying, where if I heard it from the exact same words from somebody else, it wouldn't resonate with me. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't land well. So you, just you saying something, it's going to reach the right people. It's not going to reach everybody, but that's what I mean. Like you want to do your best to be unique, to do something cool that no one else is doing. But if you're not, let's say there's 10 other people doing the exact same thing. Some people are going to watch you or listen to you just because you're the messenger, because they like your personality. They like your delivery. They like the way you say things but they don't like the other nine people and the way they say the same shit. All right. So the important thing here, here's how to differentiate yourself is to be yourself. It's so simple guys. And damn, that sounded so good coming out of my mouth. Actually, seriously, the best way to differ differentiate yourself from everybody else who's doing their own vlog and podcast and show is to be yourself because nobody else says things the way you do. Nobody else has the same sense of humor or lack thereof than you. You know, guys, this podcast, I, I've had some amazing feedback from so many of you. Thank you. But I know that what I'm talking about, there's other podcasts that talk about the same stuff, right? I'm not the only one who's ever talked about Instagram on a podcast, but even though some people may not like my personality, they might turn this off as soon as they hear my voice. Cause I annoy them for whatever reason, right? Like you're not going to appeal to everybody on the planet. That's okay. But guess what? Some people will listen to this podcast because they like to hear it from me. Even though they've heard the same thing from five other people, it wasn't until they heard it said my way that it resonated with them. That's so important, guys. Think about that. I'm not going to go much more into this question because, or into this answer to the question, because I think that's the right answer. The way to differentiate yourself is to, you know, try to do some unique stuff, but then be yourself. All right. I hope you guys enjoy this episode, episode number 10 of the Massive Agent Podcast. Thank you guys so much, everyone who participated in the contest and, and left us an iTunes review and, and shared a link to this podcast in other Facebook groups and everything. Thank you so much. Our audience has grown dramatically in the first month and a half that we've been doing this. It's super cool to see, very exciting to see what could, what this thing could become. I mean, I'm thinking like six months, eight months, 12 months down the road, like if we've already grown this much, I mean, this could be a very powerful podcast in the real estate world. That's super exciting. Thank you for being a part of that and helping to helping to help that along. And if this show has brought you some value, if you've learned something that's helped you in your business, something that you can go implement right now, the best thing you could do to help me out is to go to iTunes, leave, leave an honest review, and above and beyond that, share this with a friend. 
Okay? Share our podcast with a friend. Get somebody else to listen to us. Thank you so much. Guys, have an awesome rest of the week. Go out there and become the massive agent in your market. Have a good one.